everyone, Rascally here. And Mama, welcome to the fifth and final episode of our Teen Titans Spotlight series. This season pulls out all the stops in both story and character development as it focuses on Beast Boy and his original team, the Doom Patrol, as their own nemesis, the Brotherhood of Evil has returned, with the mission to destroy every single Titan and hero on Earth. Now, season 5 also brings in even more creative episodes than the start of the Honorary Titans, as the team travels across the globe, meeting new heroes to help them take down the brain. We also get a very special episode titled Go! that shows how one mission brought the teens together and when they first formed the Teen Titans. So yes, I have to say this is probably the cre most creative season of this show. Not saying the others weren't you know, really good or the plots weren't great or anything. I think it was just what they did. And anytime when they seem you know, travel anywhere... Uh, other than just one place, and they're not just in one place all the time, mm -hmm. is really great. Yes. So this season focuses on Beast Boy, and for the two part that you were actually discussing in our last video, Homecoming, Homecoming Part One and Two. Yes. Uh, he gets a message from his old team of from the Doom Patrol that they need his help. And let's you, tell a little about the Doom Patrol. Yeah, and it's led by it was Mento, who was the leader with telepath powers. There was yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, sorry about that. I uh, have Elastigirl. Now to be confused for the woman in the Incredibles movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I have Robot Man and Negative Man. And Negative Man was voiced by Judge Reinhold from um, the Beverly Hills Cop series. And as soon as I heard him, I'm like, I recognize that voice. I recognize that voice. I recognize that voice. And I was so stunned. Uh -huh. It was Judge Reinhold. Right. Oh, I don't think man. he had done any animation voiceovers before. No, I think later on he started to do a little more. It mm -hmm. wasn't often, but yeah, I think that's what started it. Mm -hmm. um, and they needed their help because the Brotherhood of Evil was back. And mm -hmm. they needed something to take them down once and for all. And they got to see a different side of Beast Boy because, you know, he was actually more assertive this time instead of his, you know, usual goofy, wisecracking self. Mm -hmm. And we find out why because in the beginning they show he was actually part of the team at first. Mm -hmm. And he was kicked out because he so-called couldn't follow orders. And the orders he couldn't follow was going after the brain and leaving his team to die because they were trapped in this ray. And if... It wasn't deactivated, they would have been dead. Right. And he went and saved them instead, and Mento didn't like that and kicked him out of the group. Mm -hmm. And he was only a kid! Right. So, you know where Mento's part... Mento's. <laughs> Mento's. Mento's. <laughs> Mento's. Uh, Aren't you, boy? Possessive. <laughs> um, his priorities were. Right. So he had a lot to learn. Right. And you can see what happened with the Teen Titans. It ended up becoming a thing again when, like, near the end of the two-parter when he once again decided, you know, save his teammates rather than go after the brain. Right. And he was like, this is why you were kicked out. He's like, no, he saved your life. He didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And you were seeing, like, oh, what he did, his action was right because, you know, the lives matter more than hunting down a guy who won't be the point of hunting him down. And then you have no team right. when it's over. And he would be there, you know, later. Right. Either way, whether you hunted him down down and he got away or you didn't go after him and the team died he would be there either way right and at the end of the episode um the brain you'll find that there's all these team titans everywhere so he gathered up every villain in the teen titans rose gallery and joined the forces to hunt down every titan on the planet is that we're going to take them all down so no one will stand in our way he wasn't just going after the doom patrol not right. just the teen titans he was out to get everyone so not one person would be left to get him and it was this madcap cast and what's really crazy they had the audacity to call them the brotherhood of evil Every single one of them was evil. There was no friggin' brotherhood. They were just, it should mean the evil of evil. But <laughs> <laughs> the league of evil. The <laughs> evil of evil. Yeah. Because they were the who's who of some really pretty wicked villains. Why? Right. So quickly, let's explain. Um, they have the leader who's the brain, mm -hmm. who's really, literally just a disembodied brain of a professor, and he put himself in a robot body so he could live forever. Uh, they have Monster Mala, who's a really super intelligent ape, and pretty much his lackey in this version. Uh, it reminds you of, um, who's the ape from Flash? Gr Gorilla, Gorilla Grodd. Grodd. Right. And they have Madame Rouge, who Ugh. was a very kind of irritating, Ugh. and supposedly the most sleepless I character. I can't stand Madame Rouge, for you, those of you who like her. So sorry. She is irritating as all heck. No matter what they did, she would come back. And she was in another episode, too. Yes. Where she just got on my last one. Well, yeah, we're going to get to that. Yeah, we're definitely going to get to that in a minute. Because, yeah, we are going to get to that one. 
Uh, she had the power to uh, shape shift. She was kind of made of rubber, almost mm-hmm. like Elastigirl Girl too. And she could you know shape shift. She stretched really far and and turn anybody or anything. Mm-hmm. And they had General Immortus who led the armies oh, of in every war ever uh, made in history. Right. And it's like, dang. And he was old from the start, so yeah. it's like, dang. Right, so that, that was a pretty crazy character. Yeah. And then, yeah, and they had the them and all these villains hunt down times from all over the world. So it looks like they knew it's like they're going to need help because they can't just leave this to the Doom Patrol. It was obvious. They had to help. So they were going around the world looking for new heroes like they would hear about news about strange sightings and the secret heroes and they would show up every now and then and they would mm-hmm. think, oh, they could make honorary titans to help. Right. And so this started the uh, where they would go travel and find them. Now, one of the first episodes right after the two-parter there really was great was trust yes and that's the one with of course the 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 irritating madame rouge and hot spy where mm-hmm. she was hunting him down he was the second one they found after wildebeest mm-hmm. so they were they didn't know that they were hunting them down they were just trying mm-hmm. to find people and why were they disappearing and hot spot is reminiscent of um one of ben's aliens a uh, heat blast heat blast yeah yeah and and then he was in i think morocco and uh, Madame Rouge had found him was trying to get him, but she couldn't touch him because he was too hot. Mm-hmm. Literally too hot to handle. So she was trying to figure out a way to get him. Mm-hmm. So she uh, disguised herself as Robin. Yeah. So she would gain his trust and give her the communicator mm-hmm. so they could find out where the others are located. And he didn't trust him still a little bit. Like, he knew who he was, but, you know, he didn't know him that well. He knew something was still kind of yeah. off. He He was smart enough to know... Even though he didn't know him well, yeah. that something just wasn't right. And he kept telling him, you got to power down. You got to power down. She's going to find you. You don't power down. He said, why do I need to power down? Right. I, have, I know what I'm doing. Right. And it got really intense to a point where she was actually keeping up appearances till the real Robin showed up. Right. And and, and yeah, until he found out, okay, it's, Ma- it's Madame Rouge. And it was like, man, it took you long enough to figure out. Right. <laughs> she even said that. It took you long enough to figure it out. Right. Jeez. <laughs> now, another one that was really um, good was Kale. Cole. Uh, oh, that was her name. I, I keep calling it Kale. I thought her Cole. Name was, her name was okay. Cole. Oh, yeah. Cole. K-O-L-E instead of K-A-L-E. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they after they face off Dr. Light, they find this girl named Cole and her friend Gnark, who's a mm-hmm. caveman. Mm-hmm. All he can say is Gnark. Like, I kind of like, I am Groot. Right. And she can turn into a crystal form. If she stays in one position, she'll turn into a crystal form. And then he can use her as a weapon right. uh, to fight back. And they go to this sort of underground world in the ice, polar ice caps. And it's really just this... Like this rainforest style sanctuary full of dinosaurs and stuff. It's like, where the heck is this place? Right. And I know some people are like, how does that survive in the ice? It's a cartoon. Don't think about it too hard. It's, it's neat. I'd go there. Yeah, and it had a waterfall and a spring. Like I said, it was like its own jungle paradise right. within it. And that was one of the first recruits they got. Mm-hmm. And that was a really creative episode. Like I said, and, and this, this show, this season was known for being very creative with the episodes, them traveling around the world, the storyline, and the, them having all these new characters. Now, besides the series finale, uh, what are a couple of ones that stood out for you besides the ones I picked? Okay, I think it would be Go, mm-hmm. which showed how the Teen Times first met, because yes. they weren't a team yet, because it started with an uh, alien invasion that she didn't know actually had Starfire. Right. She escaped from them, and they were looking for her. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was a really aggressive person when she first was there. And, uh, you know, she got there, and you know, she kind of simmered down. You know, she got some friends, but right. she was really tough and aggressive, and Robin trying to track her down. Well, also, she was kind of like, if you think, like Star. Star versus Force of Evil, where the yeah. guy showed her how to pop off the neck, and she's like, yay! Yeah, well, yeah. That's the way she had been reared by her male nanny. Right. He was the same way. Remember the redhead who was like her dad right. that helped to rear yeah, her. Yeah, you'll see her so, in, see him in the betrothed episode in season three. Right, so that reminds me of Star. It was the same thing. She was reared to be really tough, self-sufficient, and a leader. Right. And in the world they were in, loyalty was important, but they didn't teach about the other side, like you said, a, a softer side. Right. And she had and, great qualities being loyal, being loyal, 
um, defender of good, justice, but as you said, that soft side that was needed to flesh her out, she didn't have until right. she met the Because she didn't know what the word nice was. She said, we don't even have that word on our player. The closest is Mount Tor, weak. Right. So, and we got to see Robin, who had just left from, you know, split apart from Batman. Right. Because they said, because the rapper said, aren't you supposed to be with him? And they say, and they say yeah, right. I fly solo now. So this is when he got disbanded. And why you don't see him in Justice League. Right. And then you meet Cyborg, who got this Luke Cage hoodie. And he, <laughs> you know, no one knew he was half robot yet. Right. And then Beast Boy, who was fresh from being on his own. And then Raven, who just appears. Right. <laughs> so that is a great episode. Mm-hmm. Too bad they didn't put it. The only thing I would have liked is to have seen it maybe in the first season rather than Yeah, it then, that, then you would have understand why the the divide and conquer was so important and why Cyborg leaving was like a travesty because you don't know who these characters are for her. Exactly. Um, and, and then... There was one more episode? Okay, well... Another one I really liked, uh, I'll mention one called Revved Up. Mm -hmm. Not going to go really into it, but they kind of have a Wacky Racers style episode where this guy called Daddy Ding Dong. And I'm like, what the (laughs) hell did this come from? And he steals something that was really priceless to Robin, but you don't know what it is and you never find out. That's right. And he challenges him to a race. And if the Titans win, they'll get the case back. And then all these villains also competed to get the case too. And they were going across the country in this big old race. And I thought that was a shout out to Wacky Racers. Right. And, um, uh, the one I really liked was called Lightspeed, where they introduced Kid Flash. Yes. And they kind of gave the high five their own episode, and they were thinking they could get away with a lot of stuff because uh, the Titans were out of town. Mm-hmm. But uh, Kid Flash was there, I guess, to handle things while they were gone, because Titans East was gone, too. And uh, he went and... He went and was stopping them constantly. They couldn't figure out. He said, what's this guy doing? Like, who is this guy? I'm like, but it's not. There's nobody we know because everyone's out for uh, town. Right. And you find out, you know, it's Kid Flash. And he got kind of also this connection with uh, Jinx. And she's trying to get in good with Madame Rouge and Brother of Evil. Like, they'll get in to initiate it if they capture a hero. Mm-hmm. Because it's kind of like one of those, like, those big kids clubs that you that you have as a kid. Like, you know, there's a really cool club you get to as a kid. Like, the Brother of Evil was the cool club for villains. Right. And they thought they would be initiated if they capture a villain or prove themselves. And their task was to capture Kid Flash. Mm-hmm. And, you know, being like the Kid Flash he is, he is, like, almost uncatchable. Right. And I think the last two episodes, I know they're supposed to be... The season finale, things change. But I think Titans Together really was part one of the season, of the series finale, and then things change. Right. So let's talk about those two last episodes. Okay. So Titans Together, well, actually, you could say three part of calling all Titans. Right. Um, when they're still trying to find all these people that were, you know, going missing, and then uh, they didn't know that they were using the communicators to locate all of them. And that's how they were all getting down one by one. Mm-hmm. And they were all scattered across the globe, not only just finding people, but rescuing them at the same time. And that was and- also a still a reference um, similar to Ben 10. Remember how in uh, Alien Force... When Kevin told them, you, they're communicators. You didn't know the badges are communicators. Right. And then they had this big map, and they could see where all the plumber's kids were everywhere on Earth with little green dots. So they did the same thing. They right. They with it. And when the episode was happening all the way to uh, Titans Together, uh, you could see they were all being taken down. As soon as they would find somebody, there was a villain right on their tail ready to capture them. Mm-hmm. And Robin was trying to call all these people, okay, this guy needs help. They couldn't do it. Like, they're like, Cyborg, you gotta help them. They couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had, even had like Thunder and Lightning who were like back from season right. one. They had a, uh, all these older uh, heroes and they couldn't do it because every single one of them was being was dealing with the villains. And, and he said, how are all these Titans being captured at once? And then he figured out it was the communicator. Right. But it was too late. So you need to, you need to, th- to destroy your communicators now they're tracking us all at the same time but it was right. too late right. most of them have been captured except for the new ones that were just initiated right which leads into uh titans together mm-hmm. where beast boy led a kind of the ragtag team kind of like the episode of my little pony where it was the secondary character saving the day right beast boy led this latina wrestler with a pa- pantera, pantera yeah. we had um half of mossy manos you had Jericho, and you had... Um, Which was an interesting character. He couldn't speak. Right. But he played this guitar. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he could take over a body just by looking at them, mm-hmm. and he could speak through them, and that was the only way he could talk. Yeah, which was kind of 
creep. strange. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> and then, uh, which is probably why you never see this guy in anything else. Right. And then Harold, who had this trumpet, I and mean, when he played it, he can open portals mm -hmm. and put people in there. Mm -hmm. And this was the team he had to lead to save all the other Titans. And just when you think, you know, he can't do it, they get pretty far in. Even they were pretty impressed. Right. He said, you got pretty far for such low-rate heroes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, get to this all-out battle with the heroes and the villains. And, of course, you know, who wins in the end? But right. we can't tell you how. Right. And then it gets to the C series finale, Things Change. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you want to talk about that one because I'm going to keep talking about these other episodes because every single one was great. Well, let's leave then... Uh, things change and go to another maybe one episode. Well, I'm gonna quickly just yeah, I gotta go over it. Like, uh, we mentioned for real where the Titans East got their own episode and they were challenged by Control Freak. Was that that was a good one, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, there was Snowblind where they were in Russia and Starfire met this secluded hero named Red Star who really couldn't go on the open. That was a really good and because if he uh, was powered too much, he could explode uh, like a star. Right. And uh, hide and seek, where Raven had to take care of these three little toddler superheroes. He was actually heroes. nuclear. He yeah, had, he had this metal um, suit that he was in. Again, kind of like NRG on yeah. Ben Ten. It just keeps making right. me think of aliens. And yeah, he was kind of like that. Right. And then the last one would be the hide and seek, where Raven had to take care of these three little toddler heroes. <laughs> and uh, they were really annoying and bratty for some of the time, but they didn't, she didn't know they actually did have superpowers. And uh, Guru, uh, Monsieur Mala was after them. And you know, she had to learn to take care of the kids, and she started to get attached to them. Right. And that was all. Every episode that was really here, good. Every episode here was just awesome. So now let's get to the end of the series, Things Change. Okay, so tell us a little more about that. Okay, when they come back from you know, going around the world, uh, they see that the city's kind of changed a little bit, like some of their favorite places of clothes. The city's got a new building, and it's been really dim since they were gone. And they also have to fight this new villain who can absorb materials like Kevin. Right. And uh, Beast Boy, on the other hand, finds this girl who looks a lot like Tara. It right. looked like she was free. And people explain maybe it's because of what happened at the end of the thing with Raven's dad and everyone for Double Stone got released. Right. So maybe she was free because her statue was gone. She looked, it was Tara. It wasn't. She looked a lot right. like Tara. And she it's like, was Tara. And the Tara is you when she was out like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know you. And she right. was at this public school. It was private school, private I should school, say. Yeah. And he was trying to remind her, like, don't you know that like, you had these powers? It was your favorite places. And then she was like, look, I know you want to find your friend, but look, whoever that was is gone, and you have to let it go. Because it looks like she just wanted to start over exactly. with a whole new life, whole new identity, and just leave all that behind. Right. And the message was, you know, don't let things in the past bother you. Look to the future. And that was him, you know, running to the light. And to, to end the series is like a bright future. Not too bright for the series because they canceled it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but this was just a grand send-off for a fantastic series. That is one of a kind that we absolutely love, and we've been so motivated and uh, just going down and remembering such great episodes that when we finish this podcast, tonight we're going to start watching the entire series all over again. Yeah, it'll be like Avatar. We watch it every year. <laughs> This we don't do that with, but we just forgot just, just how yeah. great it is. So now we just want to see it all. And over ironically, again. this was show considered to be like kind of like Teen Times Go, where oh, this is gonna be sucky because of how it looks. It's like this is totally different. But little did they know, it went from being pretty uh, hated to love, well loved, mm -hmm. beloved, memorable, and one of the most popular DC co comics, cartoons, and best animated shows of all time. And I think that's another lesson. People based it on what they saw. They didn't watch the series to give an opinion. And that happens a lot when we just look at things and say, oh, that looks like this. Oh, this has got to be bad or this is good. Until you watch the series, you really don't know what it is. Now, if you watch it and decide you don't like it, then at least you're giving an opinion based on knowing something. Mm -hmm. And the same with liking something. So this, was a, this should have been a great lesson for critics. Let's just wait and watch some of the episodes before we decide to say whether or not it's crappy or not. Right, because, you know, what it was supposed to be meant for and what it is now, everyone can watch it. Even with all the dark elements and stuff in it, they le at least leave it enough to where kids can still watch it and exactly. not be terrified or parents saying this isn't suitable for children. It's still a great show for anyone of any age. Exactly. So that wraps up our Teen Titans 
five podcasts on the series. Mm -hmm. Again, join us tomorrow mm -hmm. when we discuss um, Trouble in Tokyo, mm -hmm. the send-off movie for the series. And thank you so much for joining us and knowing our love, love, love of these wonderful DC characters. Yeah. And thank you for joining us for this uh, series of Teen Titans uh, season podcast. Yes. I'm Oscar Entertainment. And I'm Mama Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. Teen Titans, go! Rivers and streams, plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket, giving to you later on in the form of a locket.